This is 2OF Entertainment. Hope you can hear me. I'm on a noisy Piccadilly at the moment. Why am I here? Lotus London. I thought I'd come down here to have a look at the new concept car, which is being exhibited here. But of course, really, it's just an excuse to uh, Google the original Esprit. Come on, let's have a look. So this, of course, is the original Lotus S1 Esprit came out in 1976 and made famous by obviously its appearance in The Spy Who Loved Me. This has got the original interior. Check it out. That is, this is totally original. The details of the championships imprinted onto the back of the car. This is not the turbo, so this is. Uh, the S1 model is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you can see the dividing line there that goes across. This is basically built in two halves, two halves of uh, composite, fiberglass composite that was basically glued together at the factory. But that's just stunning to look at. You cannot even get trim like this anymore with the colors. The red tartan seats. This thing is just absolutely resplendent. Designed by, or well, styled by, Jajari is what it says there. It is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous. But let's take a look at this. So, this, I'm not going to give you too much of the usual gump because you would have seen that in all of the media coverage that's been on this vehicle. So this is the Theory 1 Lotus concept car. It's not a real car, it's not a production car. It's a design concept. And uh, electric, obviously, 1,000 horsepower, thereabouts, 250 mile range, zero to 60 in nothing, 2.5 seconds. Um, but some very unique features. For example, instead of the lights, we have wires at the front. You can see the gold flecking that is uh, done in an unusual way. Actually, I can show you more details on another table, which I'll go over in a bit. But if you can make out, I don't know if you can make it out from this distance or the 3D, but that there, inside there, you can see a wire, a couple of wires actually. And it's kind of like they are the light filament. Carbon fiber front splitter. That's a glass canopy on top of that. It looks like a large part of the upper body is glass. You can see the steering column there. It's suspended, kind of suspended by two sort of shafts that are coming out. You've got NVIDIA, those are, I thought they were suspension um, pillars there, uh, the little V's in the middle with the gold trim on them. But it says NVIDIA on them, so it's part, I think, of the computer graphics of the vehicle. And you can see that unique design of the wheels as well. It's quite interesting. What I want to show you actually is if we can move a little bit, sorry, if we can move a little bit to the interior here. So the interior of this thing is actually done with recycled carbon fiber, um, which is then basically joined onto the original tub, which is just there. And as you can see, it's a three-seater with a suspended, look at it carefully at that middle seat, and you see there's a suspended headrest. And then the headrest itself, 3D printed, contoured around the driver so that you can silence the passengers. Actually, they've all got their own headrest as well, but you can actually pretty much noise isolate if you want. And that's been designed to isolate the driver if you want, or listen to music or whatever. It's called a Lotus Well. I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I get to the other table. But you see the pads, you think, oh, it's a bit bare bones, isn't it? And you've got these pads, and all the pads, and again, this is something I can show you when I get to the other table, uh, have got sort of haptic, it's called lotus wear, right? So they've got haptic sort of inflatable bits in them. And I guess the idea here is, I guess even the passengers, because they've got them as well, if you can see, 
And I guess the idea here is that um, they give you a haptic feel. So you know you talk about the feel of the road, and you know in the modern car, this is an EV after all, you can't really get too much feel or feedback from the road. So the idea with this is that they deliver that back through the, the inflatable bits that are in the cushions. Similarly, it's not just the cushions, but if you can make out, you see the gold blaze that leading up to that center, uh, well, I call it a steering wheel, but it's not really a wheel anymore, is it? It's sort of more of a yoke, a controller, a joystick, whatever you want to call it. Call it. it does look like it's rotates. So you see, look, it's coming out. Somebody's very kindly showing how it can be adjusted. And as you can see, that is coming out. And you can see where the join is. I don't know if you can make it out. It's sort of about here. There's a join. And I guess that's where the steering happens. And you've got the glass display in front, which I guess is a projection of the instrumentation that comes out to it. But you see how the edges of the steering um, are also uh, lined in sort of the same material as the seat bottoms are. They also have a kind of haptic feel touch to them. So here you can see it in the video and you can see the light. So this is the equivalent. Can you see that actually? You can't... Yeah, you can just make it out now. So you see the lights in this bar here. So when these doors are closed, this is basically a bisecting line that cuts across here in a similar way to what we saw on the S1 Esprit. But in the case of the Esprit where you've got uh, a black rubber bar, here you've got a lit up channel, which also then conceals, I believe, the LiDAR and the radar and stuff like that to give it autonomous drive features. Again, check out those incredible bonkers wheels on this thing. Absolutely massive. Come around to the back and you get a chance to look at the door mechanism. So if you see here, that, these pillars, the whole hydraulic system, it sort of cantilevered, if you like, and pulls the door up. So they're kind of like scissor doors, but they're not on their own. They get pulled up by these pillars that are in the top. And then this has gone down now. This panel here, this has gone down. Because previously I was looking at it, and it was raised up. And it's raised up by these, you can see, in there, you can make out that there are the bars that will lift that up. So that's obviously adjustable. Now this thing is just a prototype, it's not meant to be a working car, but looking in there, you can see that there are adjustments for the suspension, the inboard suspension type system that they've got. And you can see at the back, behind that, you can see the orange cabling that you normally have in an EV which is the bit that's connected to the battery, the high voltage bits that you're not supposed to touch. So, you can see it, you can make it out there. So it'd be interesting if there's somebody was kind enough to put the spoiler up, because that was quite interesting. But that, you see, is an extraordinary thing. So if I get some more footage of the spoiler, I'll show it to you later. Meanwhile, let's go and look at some of the displays relevant to this vehicle. So this is what they're talking about, DNA, digital, natural, and I don't know if you make that out, analog. So this is what they're talking about, the theory and the concept behind this car. This car, like I said, is not meant to be a production car. You're thinking, where does it fit in terms of the Vivaya or the Type 135 that's coming out? This is really a design exercise that is not only meant to sort of see where Lotus is going in terms of its design theory, design concept, and how it uh, builds its cars, but also looking at the sort of materials and things that it's going to be using going forward. So for example, we're talking about the gold that you saw on the inside of the car and on the sides of the car, DNA, gold tint. And this is the gold that's been used in there, of course, inspired by the JPS livery of the original Formula One car. And what I really wanted to show you is, let's come around to this side at first, because this is quite interesting. I was talking about the inflatable aspects of the steering wheel, and you can see here, this is a similar, these are, these are prototypes of the steering as they worked on them. And in this one, they've actually got a pump here. And the pump is supposed to replicate how, for example, they do, um, they, they can actually send some feedback into the steering wheel and sort of give you some feedback through pumping up bits of it to sort of give you that sense of getting some feedback and some feel through the steering wheel. 
there's some more materials that have been used it's a lot of the stuff has been recycled reused repurposed so for example here this is fascinating because this bit this is this here this is the uh, stuff that's used you see on the door panels of the of the uh, type one uh, sorry the theory one um, but this stuff you're thinking is carbon composite or it's plastic it's a painted panel but actually it's made of these three things here which is basically wood cellulose based textile fibers and woven cellulose fiber so it's sort of if you take these three items the wood uh, the textile fibers and the cellulose fiber kind of compress it and then it creates this which is known as the final cellulose composite that's what that is so that's an extraordinary way of making that again the speakers blown apart here's the speaker system just to show you how they've separated it the recycled carbon fiber these are the sort of 3d printed uh, sort of honeycomb things it's interesting because if you remember in the original uh, esprit the carbon fiber also i remember visiting the factory way back in the day and it had honeycomb textures so this is an example of how the steering wheel has been developed and you can see the glass bit there so i'm assuming that it has some sort of a projection system that comes out now again we were talking about the haptic sensations and the feel now they've, they've partnered with this company leaning into the world of soft robotics and medical innovation. This is a Berlin-based startup called Motorskins. And here you can see an arm with fingers there. And here you can see a pad. So in the pad, if I touch one of these holes, one of these circular bits here, I don't know if you can make it out, but you can actually, you can move the arms, sorry, fingers rather. Try not to be rude. And the thing is that you get a kind of sensation of how hard or how much you're pushing that in order to get the response from the fingers on that arm. And that's the sort of system that's being employed in the haptic sensations of the seats and the steering wheel. This is again the headrest bit where the speakers go in and how they printed it out of uh, carbon fiber. Adidas using some of the technologies as shown here. And this is interesting. This is, these are Kyocera, Kyocera laser lights. S sculptural abstract study uh, in, integrates the Kyocera laser lights featured in theory one. So rather than LEDs, what we've got here are these things. So these are the light bars, light wires that we were looking at at the front of the car, which actually then become light. And they are, I mean, don't even make it out on the camera, but I can tell you, they're pretty bright. Here we've got these old school <laughs> Sony monitors giving you some information here. But this is quite interesting. So this here, um, this film, which is, I guess is showing on the monitor there, reference, uh, is a reference to the interactive trans work media of art that has inspired the design of Theory One's user interface. So if you look here, it's not just about the feedback it's also about trying to understand how that would relate to the positioning of the driver who is in the center of the car so it's I think this is an incredible um, attempt at trying to reinstate feel into this new generation of vehicles there's another uh, selection of exhibits books photos and stuff that is of interest here but I really geeked out when I saw, hey, first of all, this. And this is actually a uh, Lotus Esprit archive drawing, an original drawing from the classic team at Lotus. Uh, and that itself, so actually you can see the date there. You can see that date. I don't know if you can make that out, actually. This says 28th of 2nd, so February 1973. Wow. The car actually, as I remind you, came out in 76. And here's some more details on the Esprit. And what I found, this is from the brochure. So this is a page from the actual brochure. And you can see it's the same car, same spec with the orange red tartan um, interior trim on the car. But this here is interesting. So this is, you remember when the spy who loved me, when, they, uh, when uh, Roger Moore's companion, she hits one of the buttons and he goes, how did you know that? 
So I saw the blueprints two years ago. Well, she might not have been wrong because in 1973, so there's a date on here, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but the date on here is 4th of September, 1973, issue three. This is Lotus M70 Confidential Program. It's a copy of the Confidential Program, a Lotus internal document from the 70s that explains all the engineering details and features of the soon to be revealed Lotus Esprit. So over here you've got UK, European, legally approved, federal USA design. The price, get this. I, I don't know if I can show you that, but get this. The price, estimated, £1,238.63 standard UK with alloy wheels, alloy wheels, five-speed gearbox, and a high-speed braking, high-efficiency braking system. That was it, 136 miles an hour, 0 to 16, 6.5 seconds, 0 to 119.5 seconds, 24 miles per gallon, range of 480 miles on a 20 gallon tank. And there you've got all the dimensions. Center of gravity, 16.5 inches. Uh, global vehicle specification. High performance, high quality, two seated mid engine sports car, giving a high degree of comfort, refinement, ride. Uh, to be firm but devoid of harshness with handling to the exceptionally high Lotus standard. NVH, noise, vi uh, noise vibration harshness, to be considerably improved over the Europe, Europa uh, with maximum attenuation. Uh, the Esprit was actually an evolution of the Europa, uh, with maximum attenuation of all engine transmission vibrations and noise, braking to be S130 standards, although utilizing a dual braking system with hydraulic servo and this all round. Electrical system to be advanced engineering standards utilizing strip wiring. <laughs> Similar to the uh, light wiring they have in this. So there you have a quick look around, not only at the new Lotus Theory 1, but also coming here to Lotus London, having a look at some of the incredible displays. And I love the blueprints and the documents that they've got over there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, more coming. Hit the like button, keep subscribing, and tell all your friends.